Hello and welcome to the Pear Blossom Press YouTube channel. My name is Lynn or LV Handcrafted here on YouTube and I'm making a Christmas card. <laughs> I know it's a little bit early. It's not even Christmas in July yet, but I had an idea in my head I wanted to try and I didn't want to wait. So here's my idea. I want to make this set of three ornaments on this card and I want them to light up so I'll be using the easy lights because there's three lights attached to the single battery and they all light up at the same time. You could do this with the twinkle lights as well if you wanted the lights to blink because um, the twinkle lights also have three lights attached to a single battery. But in addition to having um, the three lights, the three ornaments light up, I want one of the ornaments to both light up and swing back and forth. So I want it to be, uh, I'm going to make a dancing mechanism where I'll hang this ornament and have it swing back and forth as it's lit up even. So that's the plan. Now the dice set that I'm using is from Spellbinders. It's actually the Christmas add-on to the Beautiful Wreaths collection. And uh, the way that the dies are, there's one die that cuts out the main ornament. And there's a second die that's a smaller circle, which cuts out the circle and it cuts out this aperture of that starburst uh, pattern. And there's a third die that cuts out the, the kind of that metal, the top to the ornament that you would hang, um, use to hang on your tree. So there's a die for that as well. Now here I'm doing a little bit of a dry fit so that I can figure out where I want my ornaments to be on my card. And I'm going to just use a pencil and put a little dot, a little mark, where I want the light to come through. Now I'm putting the dot so that it's close to the opening so that it's relatively hidden. Um, and so that's why I kind of put it off more closer to the edge of that aperture opening. You'll see as I continue to work on this card that I actually change up my plan from what you see here. Instead of using the solid circle with, um, you know, the clear part being the center, that aperture of the little starburst, for the green ornaments, I actually uh, inverted it. I used the piece that fell out, the little starburst um, piece. I actually glued that in, back into the center and left an outer ring that is clear. So you'll see that in a moment, but right now I've just used my pokey tool to pierce through this embossed panel. And those holes that I just punctured through this panel, that's gonna be where the light comes through. And this panel was originally a two size, so four and a quarter by five and a half, but I've just trimmed an eighth of an inch all the way around on each edge. And that way I still have a, um, a border of my card base showing. It's white on white, which I really love the look of this, especially since I have a really hard time leaving just white, white, like white card base white showing. To me, it always kind of looks a little bit unfinished, but I knew I didn't want to introduce more color. That's where embossing is a little bit of a cheat because I don't have to add color, but I can still add texture. And so there's still a little bit of visual interest there and it doesn't seem quite as blank to me. Now what I'm doing is I'm using a dotty tape runner to adhere my ornament pieces to some clear acetate. I took the same ornament die and I cut it out of clear acetate so that I actually have something that I can glue these ornament pieces um, onto. Especially since um, with the red one, I actually want the ornament to swing back and forth. So everything needs to kind of move together. 
It's not quite as critical, the acetate, for the green ornaments because those get glued straight to um, my card panel. But it's still nice to have that acetate because there, it adds a little bit of that sort of uh, glassy look to the ornament, which I think helps to, um, helps, helps to sell the look a little bit. I'm just trimming down some of the world's best foam tape by Pear Blossom Press because it's a little bit wider than what I need. Um, I've uh, marked where I want to glue the battery and installing these lights is really simple because everything is already wired for you. All you really need to do is glue down your battery, which I've done, and then you need to tape down your lights. Now, sometimes I tape the lights to my card base, but on this card, I decided to tape the light to the back of this panel. And the reason for that is because um, it's actually brighter this way because I basically put the LED right through that hole that I poked. And so it's sitting right at the surface of the panel. So it's as it's kind of maximized how much light can actually come through. If I had um, instead taped down the lights to my card base, it's going to be a little bit further away from that opening. And so not only is the light going to be more diffused, um, because it's further away, it's also, there's not going to be, it's not going to be as bright because of that as well, because there's less light that actually reaches the, um, that the surface of the panel. And so just depending on the look that you're going for, because sometimes maybe that is the look that you're going for, um, you can decide for yourself where, where you want to adhere your lights. And it's as easy as that. You just need to just plain old scotch tape. I just taped it to the back of my embossed panel. And I just made sure that the LED was facing um, outward. And it pretty much is like kind of poking through the hole even. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is with the red one though, I've actually pulled the line all the way through. So you can see it's coming th right through that hole. The reason is because this red ornament is the one that I want to both light up and as well swing back and forth. Now for it to swing back and forth, I need to actually create a dancing mechanism. Dancing mechanisms are really easy. It's just basically you need a donut or you need a... Um, a circle that's been cut out of something. In this case, I'm using clear acetate. And the through the circle, I'm just going to hang um, this acetate onto a circular foam dot. So think of it as um, the uh, like a do not disturb door sign. You want to hang that on your doorknob. So our acetate is our do not disturb sign and the foam dot is the doorknob. And so it's going to hang there and it's going to swing back and forth. Now I've actually pulled my LED light through that um, circle that's been die cut through the acetate. So the wire is also going to be... Um, uh, going through that circle of the acetate as well as the foam dot. And that's because the wire, it needs to, it needs to actually get attached to my ornament because I want that light to shine through the ornament and I want this line to actually swing with the ornament. So that it looks like the ornament is glowing and the light is moving along with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out more of this wire. And I'm just using some plain old scotch tape to actually adhere the wire um, all the way around the ornament. 
And the reason for that, there's two reasons. One, uh, it actually helps to make this ornament heavier. And uh, in retrospect, I kind of wish I had doubled up on the cardstock here. I wish I had cut the ornament twice, once out of maybe a heavyweight cardstock, and then a second time out of my glitter, my pretty glitter cardstock to make it heavier. But that's one of, definitely one of the reasons why I pulled out so much line here and just taped it all the way around the back of the ornament, as you can see, because that helps to give it some extra weight. When you're making a dancing mechanism, the element that you want to swing back and forth, if it has some weight to it, it's going to swing a little bit better because, you know, as it swings, it'll, it'll have some more um, momentum, you know, to go back the other way. And so if you try this, I would definitely recommend two layers of cardstock and uh, and to still do this the wire so that it, it just adds even more weight. Now the um, now that everything is kind of where I want, I, I want to make sure that the foam dot, we actually take the liner off of it and I put a just a little bit of scrap white cardstock. I glued it onto my foam dot. That way it locks that bit of acetate in place so that the acetate can't fall off of the foam dot. So it's secured there now. And once I have this sort of swinging the way, moving the way that I want, then I'll go ahead and glue the ornament to the acetate. So I've just got a little bit of low profile foam here and I'm gonna glue my ornament to the acetate. Remember the acetate is just hanging on that foam dot and it is the piece that's going to actually swing back and forth. So with the ornament now attached to it, um, it's going to make the ornament swing back and forth. So uh, the trick though, as you're doing this, cause I ended up kind of um, playing around with it a lot to get it to you know, really swing smoothly. And what I realized is that you wanna pull out like a little bit extra wire so that there's a little bit of slack there. And that allows, because right now the um, LED wire, it's, it's tethering my ornament to the card base. And so it's going to restrict the movement a little bit. But if you give it a little bit of slack, um, through where that hole is, just pull it out just a smidge enough so that not so much that it becomes visible or bulky behind there, but just enough so that it has enough room to swing back and forth uh, or left to right, I should say. And so that that helps to make the whole thing operate a little bit more smoothly. And if I had to do it again, like I mentioned, I would double up on the um, ornament so that it's a little bit heavier too. That will also help it to swing. So the last couple of elements that I need to actually finish this card are a um, my push uh, indicator. And actually this time I'm using the set of action stamps from Spellbinders. Um, it's it's kind of cool. I, there's a couple of different options. There's a push here, there's a press, there's a press me, there's also a push me. So lots of different options for light up cards. There's even um, one that says I light up, which is great. And so uh, I just I uh, stamped out a couple of different options so that I, I could choose what I what I wanted. But what's interesting is that there's even one that has like the little um, rays, kind of sunlight rays. And one of the uh, stamps is push here with a circle uh, outline. And so I actually combined those and I thought that would work really nicely because the, the rays kind of mimic a little bit the that starburst pattern in the center of the ornaments. So um, besides that, the, the last thing that I need will be the 
sentiment for my card. So I'm keeping everything really simple so that it's more about these ornaments and um, this really fun light up mechanism and as well um, the swinging aspect of that red ornament. And so I'm going to keep the sentiment really um, simple as well. I thought about adding these silver stars, which were uh, another die cut from the same Christmas add-on to the Beautiful Wreaths collection. But in the end, I didn't, again, I wanted to kind of keep it really simple and more about the ornaments. And so I decided against using the stars, but um, they would have been a really nice touch, I think. But in this case, I'll just save those for a different project. So here's a close-up look at my card. I love how shiny this is, even without the lights turned on, because the glitter card stock, the iridescent mirror card, even the silver um, uh, foil for the tops of the ornaments really make it shine, even without the lights on. But when the lights come on, I really like that um, there's two different looks, because the green lights... They're kind of inverted, the centers of those ornaments. And once you get that swinging mechanism moving, it swings very smoothly. It's not a very wide sp swing because, of course, there's the line. There's the um, light wire that's still attached to it. But it does swing, and it's a lot of fun to play with. I hope that you enjoyed my card today. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And until next time, happy crafting and have a fabulous day. Bye.